there is no right or wrong in the interpretations. I had actually shared a comment this morning on Facebook about, you know, the sad part is, is when we leave it for someone else to do um, these kind of interpretations for us, we are subjecting ourselves to whatever that person is projecting on us through that which they see, which is really a reflection of their own heart. Because this is revealing your heart to you. Mm -hmm. So if we want to see what they're projecting upon us, that's fine. It'll give us great insight for the interpreters. But it's not really doing anything for you personally. If you would have told me that like six years ago, I would have been not happy with that at all. (laughs) You know, I would have like, what? And that's because back then I didn't trust my own heart. Right. Because that's, yeah, it's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. It's learning to trust that your heart has the answers. I wanted to take a look at this word here and uh, discuss it a little bit. Because this is the word that would be uh, translated as gospel. This is the word... um, This is actually a Greek word. They could have used something else, but there's a reason why. See, I just, this is where I marvel at the authors. I marvel at the authors because they chose specific words because they could use and put a message in it for those who would have the eyes to see it. Because this is literally, this is a Greek word. And it's uh, evangelion, so like an evangelist, right? This is where we get the word evangelist from or to evangelize. Okay. But there is something very, very, very profound in here. Um, What they've added is the bet. This is the letter that means to build. To build, okay. To build. It also has to do with family. And it has to do with you on the inside. Like building yourself on the inside. Okay. And since... Mm -hmm. It was added on the prefix. Who is it pertaining to? Like, who's the teacher here? Mother. Correct. And what is this meant to help produce? What does mother help us teach us to do? The outer behavior. Uh Uh-huh. And to become the bride. The bride, okay. So this is where you learn to kind of set yourself apart for a time of inward reflection and construction as you're navigating through your external world. Okay. So it's all, she she helps you in that building process because again, we can't become the wife until we become the bride. (laughs) We got, Mm -hmm. you know, linear before the spiral. So think of it like building a house. Mother would be helping you with the, the, the construction of the temple, you, Um, through your walls and the foundation and the roof and the inside of filling the temple with furniture and pictures and wall hangings and carpeting and furniture um, through spirit would be filled up through the father in the internal work so that your temple is fully functional inside and out. So what I find fascinating about this, absolutely fascinating, is right here. This is so, oh. this word in its root is gimel lamed hay, but it's, it has a yod here. But the root of this word means to reveal and to uncover. To reveal and uncover. And in fact, the book of Revelation in Aramaic is called Giliana. It's from the same root word. And the whole book of Revelation is about revealing how to become Christ anointed in all the stages. It is like the total manual to become. And it's called the the uncovering. The uncovering. Uh The underlying value of what is being said to us in Aramaic is so flippant, beautiful. It's just... I marvel. I look at this verse and I'm just like, oh my gosh, it is so full of information, this one verse. So this word right here, in its now it's not in its static form as Gimel Lamed Hey. It's now in its active form and it's hidden. That's why this word, this word was used instead of two other words for gospel. 
is because of this little nugget right here, which means that it is the revealing. Now we're talking about the inner parts of this word. And so this revealing and uncovering is that which is hidden within you. It is going to uncover something within you that is already dormant within your heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you're going to have to, you're going to have to build it. So in other words, this word is helping with blueprints. Now this, this is so amazing. This three letter word, this is a, uh, this is another hidden word. Again, why they would use this word instead of two other ones that they could have used for gospel. The root of this would be Aleph Yod Nun. And if you want to write a note on it, it would be Strong's number 369. By the way, I've, I've seen this word so many times, I even remember the Strong's number. Uh -oh. 369. And this word means to become non-existent, a non-entity. Right. Well, those who would speak in Hebrew and Aramaic, if they don't slow down and actually see what is hidden in there, they're missing a whole lot of information because these frequencies are still interconnected in these words. Okay. And they're used purposely. Like letters are added and deleted purposely to convey a deeper message to those who would have the eyes to see or the desire to look for them. Because all of this vibrational frequency is encoded in each word that is then in turn affecting us by increasing the light within, which is speeding up our resonance, which allows us the ability to come up and higher out of our dense nature into a more lighter frequency, um, which allows us to escape the, the narrative and escape the matrix. You know, that's why um, it expands your consciousness. That's a better way of saying it. It expands your consciousness ability to see greater things because everything's energy. Everything is energy. So this word right here is directly connected to becoming a non-entity. And why is this important? The reason why this word is important is because you've heard the story of Enoch, correct? About how he was yeah. and he was not. Right. Well, this is like the root word for he was not. Oh. Okay. So in other words, Enoch escaped the matrix. Okay. So his vibration frequency was so much higher that he was just not here anymore. I'm sharing this with you because the 369, uh, it's Aleph Yod Nun, but this doesn't have a Yod in there. It has a Vav, which mm -hmm. means if you were just, if I could black all the other letters out and you were just looking at these three, mm -hmm. what it means is that the power was given you to you on the inside for you to be able to become nothing, to become non-existent, to not become a player in this matrix. This is actually the active stance of the form that you actually connected to the power of that. You connected to it in your heart that, you know, it wasn't just given to you. It wasn't a vision or power and direction to do so. This is actually connecting to it and having done it. So, this word for gospel is saying on the inside, you need to build this, but this is everything that you need to get out of and become non-existent in this realm. And you're going to do it because through the spirit in the oneness message, if you connect to the power that is already given to you in your heart, you are going to change your flesh. This is a risen noon versus a fallen noon. Noon is a letter that means, uh, it means the seed of life. It means perpetuity, to shoot forth new life, a strong base to stand upon and to produce an heir. There's a lot of meanings to this. Mm -hmm. And in this form, it's risen. So this also has to do um, like with progeny, but it has to do with a spiritual walk in your doing or a flesh walk. So like, are you producing spiritual progeny or are you, are you producing flesh progeny? Mm -hmm. But it also is specifically dealing with your flesh. And this is new flesh. It is risen. It's not in its fallen state. So when we become nothing and we connect fully to our heart, 
our estate, our being, our tempo is going to be transformed into something new that is going to be revealed to us and uncovered. In the system of duality, the bipolar duality that all the suffering um, is has to be endured. So when, when I say to escape the matrix, what I'm really saying is I'm removing myself from the position of duality so that I'm no longer on the chessboard where they can control and manipulate me. I'm standing above it, above it, seeing both sides for what they are in the place of neutrality, in the place of Christ anointing where I can see oneness unity and I have unconditional love for all seeing that both sides are actually being utilized and being of service to the one infinite creator both sides and choosing not to you know continue to divide or continue to judge but be the loving observer in what is unfolding and transpiring around us